You're listening to The Peach Bit. I'm here with Yogev Gabai, well-known drummer in Israel. He plays with a, a few different projects like Distorted Harmony, Comb, Ron Minnis, just to name a few. But he also has a growing YouTube channel where he has an, an assortment of videos. But in, this includes his new series called Time Consuming, where he takes an in-depth analysis at interesting rhythmic structures inside of songs. Yogev, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me and welcome to The Pit. Thank you very much for having me. And you're one of the first people that pronounces my name fully correctly. Obvious question should just be, just, what's your favorite Mashuga song? Oh, <laughs> why would you do that to me? Uh, I know. Uh, I, it would, I, if it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Obviously, I it's know. hard. But I think the leading contenders, I'll give you like 23 leading, no, I'll give you like two leading contenders or three. It will be the exquisite machinery of torture. Wow. I love yeah. that song. I love that song. Um, do not look down. Oh, Jesus. Um, and marrow, maybe. Ooh, that's, that's definitely one of my favorites, too. It's kind of interesting. I mean, when I listened to Do Not Look Down, I... I felt like that was one of the most boring songs on the whole album until I watched your video explaining it. And now I feel like that's got to be one of the most crazy songs I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so, I mean, I just find it so, like, it's so violently groovy. It's amazing. I, 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 yes. I mean, it's, it's, it has something, maybe it's the tempo, maybe it's just because it's slow, but not slow. But plus the, the, the fact that, I mean, I can't escape the fact that it's, it's just rhythmically super interesting for me because of that yeah. concept. But yeah, but Marrow would be the, the opposite of that one. <laughs> Marrow is incredible. <laughs> the energy. Uh, I need to get into, I imagine everybody is being a superhero. So I need to know your origin story. So go back with me, if you can remember. How do you remember falling in love with music? Ah, that's pretty easy i mean my my like my parents just listen to music all the time and if you see uh, we have like videos of us when i was like you know, three or four with my brothers and you will see us just stranded on the floor and my dad does like air guitar in the background kind of stuff so he was in a band when he was younger my mother just i mean it was just there was music all around all the time um all three of my brothers started playing at some point, and somehow I just stuck to it, I guess. Oh, so yeah. you have th three brothers. Are they all older? Uh, I mean, me and two other. Uh, one older and one younger, yeah. Okay. And so what did your brothers play? What instruments? My older brother played the guitar for a while. We even played a few shows for a second. Um, and my younger brother, he played keyboard for... Two weeks, maybe. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> painful subject for him, which I love bringing up. <laughs> uh, and, and you said your dad was in a band as well. What did he play? So he played bass in a Deep Purple cover band. No way. Yeah. And uh, and his dream was to be a drummer. So my... my okay, so my, my like uh, hypothesis for why I'm playing drum is... You know how everyone, when they're six, wants to play drums? Right. That, I mean, that's like a thing. So I think that the only people who become drummers are those that their parents actually agree to the idea of them becoming drummers. Because God like, bless oh, I want Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, I want to play drums. No, you're not going to play drums. It's a terrible instrument. That's the usual and most appreciated answer. But some parents just go with the idea. It's like, yeah, sure, I'll buy you a drum set. And that, my parents were those. So... I stuck with that. <laughs> <laughs> so from a young age, you were exposed to a lot of rock music and everything like that. Was it just a lot of usually rock music in the house or was it kind of like every genre? So from my dad's side, it was mainly um, everything from Deep Purple, Zeppelin, Dio, Rainbow, Uriah Heep, Kansas, um, stuff like that. So 60s, 70s, 80s kind of rock and roll. Um, from my mother's side, it was a lot of uh, singer-songwriter stuff. So a lot of uh, Stevie Wonder and um, uh, James Taylor, Cat Stevens, 
uh, Paul Simon, stuff like that. More American kind of, um, kind of singer-songwriter stuff. So that was always the atmosphere around. And then when I was a teenager, I, as teenagers do, I started listening to heavier and heavier stuff. So that's how that started. How old are you when you picked up the drums? Um, I, uh, I started studying when I was eight. But two years in, my drum teacher died. Wow. Yeah, yeah it was, it was kind of weird because I wanted to play drums like any other kid. I went to the conservatory and I started learning how to read, which is, I mean, which is the last thing I want to do when you're eight. So yeah. you st- I started learning how to read. I, for a year, I only played a snare drum, learning how to read, and I hated every second of it. I really didn't like it. I, I didn't even know why I stayed. But the beginning of the second year, we started playing some more drum set stuff, and I started liking my teacher a lot. And then by the end of that year, my mom just told me that I can't go and have lessons with him anymore. She didn't really know how to say it because he died. And... I, just, I was just like, why this? I mean, what? Like, but, but I'm just starting to like it and blah, 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 and all that. And they brought in a substitute teacher for one lesson and I left. So I kind of stopped playing when I was 10. And I picked it up again when I was, I don't know, maybe 14, something like that, when I discovered Metallica. Great. So you're 14 years old now and you're playing, getting into heavier styles of music. Do you start a high school band? What happens? Yeah, yeah. So I discovered Metallica, and I thought that was the best thing that ever existed in the planet. That was a, <laughs> I, I think I listened to that for two years, and that's it. That's the only thing I played, only thing. I think at some point, I even... How, how familiar are you with Metallica? Uh, quite familiar, yes. So um, if you remember Lars, the drummer, he doesn't have a right symbol. And right. At, at some point... I was just like, I'm going to sell my ride symbol because I don't need it. <laughs> because why would I need it? The, the best band in the world doesn't use it. Who am I to use it? So I told my dad I'm going to se- sell it. He, he said, okay, that's fine. I'm going to buy it from you. And I'm like, why would you buy it? He said, like, because I want to buy it. What do you care? So he bought the symbol. He knew I'm going to want it eventually. So he bought the symbol from me. And then two years later, when I discovered Dream Theater and I ran into my, my right symbol back, <laughs> uh, I told him, like, do, do, you have, do you have my right symbol? He's like, yeah, sure. I can sell it to you if you want. And I'm like, are you serious? He's like, yeah. So I had to wor- go work and buy it back. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then yeah, we, we had many, like, I guess, like, everyone starting with, like, cover bands and stuff. So... Just we started covering stuff like Iron Maiden and Metallica and Megadeth and stuff like that. Um, yeah, through high school, I think. Yeah. All right. So you're a, a metalhead drummer going through high school, but you eventually went on to Berkeley College. True. Uh, it was was that in Boston? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So did you audition to go there? Like, how did this all come out? Because I, I, it's a pretty big deal. <laughs> Um, so my, my mom is from Boston originally. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to mention that. So we would go there every, I mean, we would go just visit family every two years in the summer. And one summer we just passed by Berkeley and I asked my uncle what that building is. And he told me, this is, uh, like, this is Berkeley college of music. And he said, and if you're, uh, if you'll get good enough at some point, you can come and study here. And that kind of just stuck kind of like in, in my head. It just stayed there for a while. And after I finished the army, I joined the, a music school here in Israel that has a partnership with Berkeley. So instead of going for four years at Berkeley, I did two years here and, and then I left and like joined the third year at Berkeley. So I did two years there. And... <clears throat> Going through music school and getting a uh, formal education behind the drum set, did you ever feel as though that it kind of shook the creativity out of you, that you made you kind of overanalyze everything you played, or was it the opposite? Actually, no, because most of my, um, 
like when I was when I was learning the instrument and kind of like getting exposed to most of the music that I got exposed to. So let's say from age, I don't know, 13 till 21 or two, which is where I did a, most of my self learning kind of I didn't take I didn't I, I wasn't having I didn't have any like lessons or something. So it was kind of I just kind of like adapted a bunch of ideas. And once I got to school, I was kind of I, I was I was kind of, I knew how to play. I was I was fine on that end. So school was actually just gave names to what I kind of knew in my ears, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. So I learned um I learned how to read because I played in an orchestra when I was in high school. So that in combination with just learning, you know, songs to play and playing with bands, I had enough kind of like enough knowledge to to a point where I got to school and the teachers kind of explained some topics and I just I kind of knew how the, how they sound like already and I could I I just basically got the names for all the concepts that I that I learned so so it was I I don't feel like it uh it did anything like that I didn't even think about it that's a that's a great question though because maybe I, uh, it did <laughs> well I mean it seems as though you had already expanded and gotten really well with your ear before you went to college this one my experience in music education it seems like a lot of people have either a really good ear for hearing music and uh, recognizing pitches and things and that some people have a really good brain for understanding mm -hmm. the the writing and the harmony and the theory but it seems like you had developed your ear before you had gone to college so you you were ready to kind of take in this information and understand it because you already understood it by playing it kind of yeah i mean certainly when i got to berkeley because when i got to berkeley i was i was what 26 or 25 so i was on the older side of the students as well because american right. students are usually younger um and i mean israeli students that go abroad we were usually older just because of the army and blah 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 and all that um yeah. but i i yeah i think that it's at i i got i got there with a well enough established like ear for stuff and school just kind of just uh, just put names on stuff that i already knew but i think you're right by asking the question because there are things that once you learn they can limit your your viewpoint that is yeah that's definitely true yeah it's like now when you approach music you feel like you always have to do something super super complicated or else it doesn't it's not good enough to be playing or something and you're looking for the 13th note all the time and uh, not necessarily <laughs> complicated but it's like i'm doing when i'm thinking about stuff um till till very recently i think i i wouldn't do things that things that won't make sense on paper so uh, okay. i wouldn't like if i play something and it happens to me that I don't know I play a session with someone and we're editing and there's a drum field that that sounds great but I don't really understand what's going on in there so I can't really write it down I would change it where actually now for the past I don't know, maybe a year or two once I realized that I'm doing that I kind of stopped doing it and it's like if this sounds great and I don't know what it is that's even better that <laughs> just makes it even cooler but I <laughs> I I stopped um having that kind of like a crutch where it's like, oh, but this doesn't make sense on paper. So I don't really care about that anymore, but I used to, which is, which is why that's a great question. <laughs> well, it seems to be something too with uh, watching your series time consuming. It seemed like very quickly you could get into places where you can't describe it on paper, at least not in normal ways that most of us can would be able to read and make sense of, uh, you know, just simply trying to add a, another triplet onto the end of the bar it's like okay so what's the time signature now <laughs> exactly yeah exactly <laughs> and so that's why i love how you approach your channel you you really explain things you're like this comes you have to understand things from your own cultural viewpoint how you hear music are you going to hear it from a western uh kind of ear or are you going to have the eastern kind of ear or 
putting that all together, you kind of made up new definitions, like uh, how you came up with uh, what you call shifting gravity centers. Mm -hmm. and I thought that was a really, really good way of explaining it because that's really what it feels like when you play it, right? And yeah, I thought it would be interesting to get to what, what, where I'm going with this long ass question. You had a conversation. <laughs> you had a conversation with Nick ba Barst. I'm gonna, that's that's way barsht. better than what I did. <laughs> so after you had a conversation with him, did he seem more human or less human? Because it's like, how does how does an is he an android? <laughs> I, I I I think so. I think so. But yeah, okay. Um, but I, I it's like, I think way more human for me because a lot of his his a lot of his things just it, it makes sense it makes a lot of sense also he sent me a bunch of scores to look at so i i could ask him about it in the conversation kind of and i think once you get to once you get like proficient enough in in any topic i guess you start realizing the limitations of the environment that you learned you learned it through kind of exactly yeah and obviously he got like he he got there so i could talk to him about it and he knows like he he knew what i'm talking about which which was was it was great and those things even in the comments like in the comment section on, on on youtube or some people just email me about that video specifically that you mentioned um like people always try to make sense of it from a certain perspective bes besides like a anything but a musical perspective which is interesting so i got into a conversation with a guy um explaining that whole concept through the like the fibonacci series you know and the golden ratio and stuff you know all that yeah yeah so obviously it has to do some there's there is something to say about it with uh with regards to that same concept of mine um of mine i didn't invent it but i just talked about it. but um but there i mean there's there's like always um I feel, like you said there's a need to kind of um try to present the idea through the mindset that you, through like your own personal mindset without trying to think about it not through that like like lens i don't know if that's if this makes sense i think it makes sense because uh, like when i think about what you talked about doing a piece uh, an ensemble in berkeley and somebody brought in a piece that was like at 30 bpm and you thought well i'm just going to double this and play it half time right but he told you no try to think of it as 30 bpm because i want you to feel i want it to feel like there's a struggle and exactly it changes the way you think about how you play and everything right exactly and then the first thing i did was like okay how do i adapt this to my point of view instead of like like saying I guess it's an ego thing. It's hard to say that because it's it's you need to give up a lot of like a th you need to give up some things that you carry for a, for a while, and you know I always thought of myself as some someone who yeah I, I've been a drummer for this many years blah 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 and I I know my rhythmic stuff blah 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 and then this guy comes in and tells me to play something in thirty beats per minute and the like my first instinct was kind of like to defend my my position. Kind of, if you know what I mean, right? And yeah, and when he said, but he, but he was like, he was better at at it than I was. So he said, like, yeah, yeah, and I know what you mean, but like, try it, just try it, because I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to achieve something through this. So like, try and 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 try and do it. And he he convinced me to do it, and it was amazing. It was a totally different experience for me. I think this is also something that we get uh, when we play along with a conductor. Have you ever been in an ensemble where you've had to follow a conductor? Yeah, 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 yeah. many times. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this, they're able to get you to play differently just by moving their arms a little differently, right? Exactly. They, they can play with, with, with uh, like, elastically. It's like, let's make this a little bit shorter, a little bit faster. It's very flexible, which is cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh <clears throat> I want to get back to your music though. Uh, Distorted Harmony. Mm -hmm. How did this? How did this band begin? You you met Yoav. Uh, yeah, yeah. So he, uh, wow, you did your homework very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, he he contacted me when I was 
uh, 19, he did like a bunch of demos online and he was looking for a band. Um, it didn't work out with me for a, a couple times, but um, at some point I just told, because he was talking to me through Facebook and I really don't like Facebook. So I would just go on it like once every two weeks or something. So I always miss his messages. <laughs> so at some point I was like, listen, when it doesn't work out with the next drummer, just call me. This is my number and that's it. And then he called me and we started, we had like a group. It didn't really work out. We started looking for other players. And then we, I think 2012, we recorded our first album. Right. And so with Utopia, that was mostly just you and Yoav's ideas. I, I mean, that was, uh, I think like 95% his stuff. Right. Um, and he writes amazing demos, drums, bass, guitars, everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would, I just came in and we just worked on, on like arrangements a little bit. Obviously, I changed some drum parts because it's much easier. But the first album is is almost 100% all of him, all, all his stuff. And so how did that, I mean, now that you guys have done three albums, I mean, Utopia must have felt uh, very much like Yoav's project. And then Chain Reaction must have felt more like the band. Did everybody kind of have the chance to get their own ideas onto that album? So it's, um, it, like in a way, yeah. So the writing was still, Yov was still writing stuff. And I got way more involved. So he would write stuff and I would just come to his house and we would just rearrange everything, kind of. But the more we played with that, like with those specific people, the music just kind of went to their direction anyway if that makes any sense. So like we wrote, we would write a, a, I don't know, a bass line that, that fits Iggy's playing in a way, or we would think about, let's play, I don't know, let's say this is the verse or something. So we would think about a verse that would complement like the vocals that we already know kind of. So right. in, in a way it kind of like sh got shifted towards that group. I think that's my favorite album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, was just, it was a great opening track. Oh, time. that's that's my favorite track. Then with uh, a way out, uh, how did that feel? Did, the writing process for a way out did it feel more inclusive than the previous two albums? So that's actually a very interesting uh, album because it's been we re we re we released um, Chain Reaction in twenty fourteen. I think July 2014. And then I left for Berkeley a month later. Ah. Uh. Yeah. And I and me and Yav were doing a lot of the of the of the writing at the time. So for I think for maybe two years, I I mean I came back once a year and we and we played like gigs and stuff, but there was barely no writing going on. And then um Yov started writing stuff and he got into a phase of, of of writing and at some point he told me that he has like he wrote like eight tracks or something and he wants uh, to start moving forward to uh, to record them and I, and I haven't heard anything about it so he sends me the tracks and I didn't like any of them oh wow. which was like I I was in a terrible position because I was I, I was like he he takes my opinions very seriously and I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm like a very active member in the band. So if I wouldn't, if I don't like these, it's, it's, I don't know what, like what to do. So I, right. I, for a few days I was just, I don't even know what to say. Should I say it? Should I not say, I, I don't even know what I got to a point where like, we're, we're good enough friends. Uh, we're like, we're close enough and I should be honest. So we got on a call and I was like, listen, I, like there's one song that I like the middle section of and like, that's it. I, I just, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I, I'm just not feeling it at all. It was very hard to, to, to say it because he was working on it by himself. And I, it's not like I have alternatives like, oh, maybe let's do this. Let's do that. I was just like, listen, I just don't really, I'm not really feeling it kind of. And he was like, he, he understood, obviously. And I think maybe 
two or three months later, he sends me, I think, six or seven new tracks. And I'm like, you can't, you can't be serious. He sent me like completely new songs, which are, most of them are the album that you heard. And I'm like, listen, man, first of all, this is amazing. Second, I, I like the big majority of these. So like, I'm, I'm down to keep on working on, on these which was, th- th- that was mind-blowing for me that he did that. Well, yeah. I mean, how does he just have so much sauce in the bottle? <laughs> he, I mean, he, he's, uh, he, he was a lot into like film scoring. He has a very, very, like, r- he learned jazz. He was a lot of, into film scoring. He has a very, very rich background. So, I don't know. And, and I feel like the stuff that he wrote at the beginning Maybe he took for a different group, or he like he produced he produced some bands, so maybe he like you know gave them some songs that he wrote or something. But he got rid of those and just wrote new ones, and I was I was amazed that that happened. I thought that was the end of the band. Wow. Yeah, and he just <laughs> came with all those, and I was like, listen, I I don't I literally have nothing to say. This is incredible, and 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 yeah, let's start doing it. And and we worked like remotely. And um, I think 2017, I went to record, or 18. I don't remember, but I came back to Israel. I recorded everything, and it's that, that album is, is great. It has, like, banger after banger. I love that album. Uh, you guys' sense of dynamics in that band is what always astounds me. You can have some of, like, the, the most somber, relaxing, moody, beautiful-sounding moments and right inside the same song, you might suddenly go to something that's as heavy as my sugar. It's really just the full, I don't know, the dynamics is what I love. <laughs> it's, I mean, obviously it's something that, that we all, um, we all like, and we all, none of us are like super diehard metal fans that's like, that listen only to that. You know, you know, there's some people that's just, that that's the thing. They just listen to metal, the, the stronger, the better, the louder, the faster. And, I don't think any of us are like that, so it it very much reflects on 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 the music. Uh, before we move on from Distorted Harmony, I need to ask you what's on the horizon for the band. Do you guys have new music you're working on right now? So or do you not want to let the cat out of the bag? <laughs> no, sure, I will because once I say it out loud, we're accountable. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so um we we had some changes in in lineup so we have uh in uh after chain reaction we ha- we added another guitar player because we wanted some more power and then we had some switchovers with guitar players so um so what was going on right now we and we we did some shows with the, with the newest um lineup and then for the past maybe two years it was kind of like slow and we're trying to regroup kind of and um and and then last year i moved to new york where one of the guitar players he he lives he lived in new york at least and we work like really well together so the plan was for me to move to new york and we gonna start writing new stuff hopefully for like a i don't know fourth album or something and I ended up moving to New York um, in March 2020. Um, I don't know if you remember what happened in March 2020, <laughs> <laughs> but um, very, very soon after uh, the lockdowns started, I mean, we, we met like we met twice, and we actually started um, sketching out songs in, in February last year, and then the lockdown started. So he just went to his girlfriend in, in LA. I stayed in New York because we just all thought it's going to be over soon. And I mean, long story short, we both ended up leaving the States and coming back to Israel for the time being. And we just maybe a few months ago started picking up once he came back here and I came back here and now the whole band, we're all here. Um, we started picking up the, the old material and surprisingly enough, we started working on a song and every update that we do, we just call it the name of the song and like the date. 
and we happened to just update a song exactly a year after we started like working on it initially last year which was like damn it's it's just a year of nothing yeah. of, of nothing so we're actually working on new stuff and there's there's really cool stuff <laughs> <laughs> so yeah exciting I, yeah i don't i don't know what's going to be the future of you know shows and blah 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 all that but we're aiming to record something i don't know when because we didn't finish writing it but it's uh, in the works all right i need to shift back now to your youtube channel this sure. is how i discovered you was in the related videos one time and saw that you had done an explanation of the song art of dying by gojira mm -hmm. which is one of my all-time favorite songs so then i just started watching the rest of your videos and I love your style. I love your sense of humor. I love how in depth you go. Like you decide to go to places a lot of other people would just kind of gloss over. It's informative and entertaining. What gave you the idea to start the series time consuming? Um, so, I mean, I, I always liked dealing with that kind of stuff. I, I just always liked, I, I mean, I, I like dealing with numbers and stuff like that. And I just like, thinking about um like just r like analyzing those things and i started just thinking about um kind of questioning if my if my analysis is correct according to the artist like i i can hear what's going on but i wonder if the artist also thought like the same way so i just started thinking about those uh, like a lot and and like all the time, I would get like a bunch of my friends would you know send me some a song that I didn't like figure out you know like what what the hell's going on in this part, and I would just listen and and like and, and tell them. So I always liked doing that and 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 figuring out like those things. And I had the idea of doing it, but I also knew it's gonna take a lot of of just a lot of effort because it is, it takes a lot of time to do any, like any of those episodes, especially when I started, when I had no idea what I'm doing. So I just, once, once you, we saw, I saw that lockdowns are just like a thing that's going to stay. I was like, maybe I'll just start it now. So I start, I started it during, during COVID. And you started with Rosetta stoned, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, so how was the response to that and did you like because it seems like as i go through the videos the mashuga videos are always crazy crazy popular and you must have figured that out r really quickly too is there's a mashuga fan base out there that is latching on to this uh, yeah so i what i did was i i, I pre-filmed like three i mean i pre-filmed the first one and i sent it to a bunch of my friends just for for comments just this is a channel i think about doing tell me what you think this makes sense like what any thoughts so they gave me a, a shit ton of comments and and then i filmed the um, the virgil donati one with the eggs did you see that one yes yeah so i filmed that and and sent it to them and got more comments and all that and then i i also thought that maybe just just for the to get more like exposure i'll do bleed because because bleed because everyone likes bleed yeah so I started with those three just to like get up, just to see what's going on. And at the time, Bleed didn't get more attention than the others. So, oh. I, yeah, I, I didn't really, it didn't really like outperform the other two. So I was like, okay, it's, it's like, it's okay. It's going like this kind of like direction. Then um, Tigran released like his, like one of his new songs back then. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll, I'll quickly do this one as well, just so it's very relevant. Um, that one started picking up a little bit. And then I just went, I mean, I went on from there very, very slowly. And it's just, if, if you go through the videos, they, they get better with time. And, um, and one of the, like one of the things I try to, to, to have in the channel is, is, to keep the big variety of stuff because uh, like this is it's not like a metal breakdown channel i'm not trying for yeah, it to be that yeah. because there are like rhythmic stuff everywhere um so i'm trying to keep it 
not like exclusively metal, which is hard because metal players just they go far, <laughs> which is great. Which is, which is cool. Obviously, I love it. But there are other uh, like uh, there are other artists that do this go as far. And I, I kind of want to just introduce people to other like rhythmic stuff. And then I did um, combustion, which honestly I, th- I thought would just be like a filler video. That's what I thought. Because it's um, because the, the, the few people that I consulted with before doing that the, uh, all heard it in the correct version, like in the correct way, and I was the only one who heard it upside down. So oh. I thought like, okay, I mean, I was just going to share what I thought when I heard it for the first time. Um, but then apparently that, that was, that was, I think the, the video that started the whole, that, that was the first, like the first video that actually went places and got a lot of comments and a lot of, um, just views and people just started discussing that, that stuff. And, and yeah, I think that was the, and I mean, I, I knew that, that, that Meshuga is going to be a topic that people like, obviously, because Meshuga fans like understanding what Meshuga does because their their variety of stuff is so big so it's like never ending and once I did that video the bleed also started picking up <laughs> so, so yeah but that's one of the things I love about your channel is like you said you're not just a metal breakdown channel you go into genres all over the place and you'll take a lot of suggestions in the comments too and you've actually created a, your own Spotify playlist that will have people's suggestions that might be in a future episode maybe that's really cool and it's really inclusive it brings people in and you know now i've heard polyrhythmic hip-hop i've heard polyrhythmic j-pop you know things that i never would have appreciated before but now i'm like well i'm gonna go check that out uh, completely <laughs> that was i mean those both of those are not my ideas both of those are just friends that were like listen you have to listen to this and it's like i mean i have Come on, J-pop. I've never heard that before in my life. Maybe, Same. maybe, like maybe, maybe a little bit. But then a, f- a friend of mine sent me that thing, and that is, I mean, <laughs> that that chorus is so intense. It's like, are you serious? How is this even allowed to do something like this? And that, I mean, so that blew my mind. And the hip-hop thing, same thing. And I, I mean, I just love finding those. And people send me my like. My spreadsheet of, of suggestions is very long from stuff that people send, and it's incredible. I, I also really love your style, the way you make the videos. I mean, somebody could have just came in and made a whole bunch of animations for us to watch, but you actually cut out pieces of cardboard and draw guitars and, you know, China symbols and stuff on them, and you hit them with your <laughs> hand, and you got the, the music overlaid with hitting them with your hand. That's I've made videos and I've edited videos. That's not easy to do what you do. It takes a lot of effort and time to like put that into your video. Where do you think you kind of fell in love with that? Well, like what 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 was it that made you want to do that? Um <clears throat> I think I I I I'm always inclined to to write stuff down, to j- draw stuff anyway. And um Especially when it comes to rhythmic stuff, I always draw stuff that has nothing to do with notation. So I'll, I'll just draw like a circle and then a smaller circle and then like a, a, a combination of like shapes or just to get my point across. It just makes more sense than the than, than notes kind of. So <clears throat> I started by, by doing that. And then I, I, I was kind of stuck about how, how am I going to play examples? That was... That was a thing I had to 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 think about, and then I, I don't know. Then, then one day I was just like, because I was starting to think, because I don't know I have many musician friends. I can just ask for this guy to play this and blah blah and this, and it's like no, I'm I'm not gonna be. I don't like being dependent on other people, so it's like I need to figure out something I can do by myself, but I can't play any of those <laughs> instruments, <laughs> and then it's like. I, I somehow that idea popped to my head and it's it's like that this is great because I don't need to know how to play any of these I can just I mean you know I, I'm not really playing anything but 
if if I I can like draw super like super stupid instruments, people will hopefully get what those instruments are. And then I'm talking about the rhythms anyway. So if I tap it, it's probably enough. Because if the rhythm is there and I'm and the like melodic content is not there, that's fine because I'm not talking about the melodic content, I'm talking about the rhythm anyway. So so tapping is probably fine. And and it worked. I tried it for the I, I think I tried it um with the tool video and, and that was one of the things. Like is this is this like mega dumb or is this okay? And people were like, no, this is great. So it's okay. I, I find it a lot more visually interesting to look at than to just watch like a nice clean video animation. Do you do the videos one hundred percent by yourself? Does anyone help you edit them or anything? No, I I, I do. <clears throat> yeah, by, by by myself. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. hats off to you. Thanks. Uh, so I need to ask you about May Sugar. What can you tell us about May Sugar? Uh, so that was um, something that was one of the viewers suggested as a joke. Um, because after the the. Um, uh, what's that stuff? No. Uh, after the combustion video went well, I did an- another one on, on Clockworks. And in that video, I th- I was kind of thinking about maybe I'll do one big Meshuga episode or maybe I didn't really know because they got so much response and people wanted more Meshuga. So it's like, I didn't really know how to go about it. And then someone just suggested, like as a joke, I think, um, how about like doing a, a month and calling it, he said, he said both um, March sugar and May sugar, and I was like, Dude, "May sugar sounds way better," and it gives me more time <laughs> to prepare. Um, so I was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll do, I'll do that." I kind of like announced that without knowing really what to do, what I'm gonna do about it. Um, so I announced that thing, and once I announced that, we started thinking about what to do. We as uh, me and my girlfriend, by the way, she she's the one that does all the thumbnails. Okay. Way. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> all all that is all all her stuff, and she helps me uh, tremendously with the channel. So we were thinking about what to do in that month, and so I'm thinking. I mean, I'm gonna probably do obviously more than the monthly um, Mishuga video. There's gonna be at least two of those, and I'm thinking about some other things to do either uh like a workshop like an online workshops thing with um maybe just to explore how to break these songs down or maybe um maybe a video about how because some people just ask me like is it cool that you're breaking this down but like how do you even find these cycles kind of so maybe a video about that i'm still thinking about it there are Two things that I'm not gonna tell you, because <laughs> I don't even think they're gonna, if they happened or not. I hope they will. Um, there are some. I, I'm, I'm still thinking about. I mean, finding the songs would be very easy <laughs> because there's just too many to to choose from. I did want to do. Um, do you know the song "I"? Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the, you is, mean the album? <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of. So I did want to do that. I was trying to. Oh s- my god! I started thinking about doing that, but then I found a video of of, of uh, Thomas, the, the drummer, saying that it's completely random. Yeah, yeah, that's what he said in an interview. He said, "No one knows how I goes." A- yeah, so it's like, huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so I don't know. Maybe I can't find anything there. So maybe that won't be a thing. Um, I think that would go pretty viral if you did do that, though. I, I mean, I, I just wonder if there's... Cause I'm, I'm going to check. I'm going to check to see. But once he said that, it's like, huh, maybe it is. Maybe it is random and there's actually nothing to 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 like figure out. Because there are some songs that I still didn't figure out. Like, for example, Marrow that we talked about before. Mm, yeah. Uh, People have been requesting it, and I've been kind of like um, avoiding to answer because I still didn't figure it out. <laughs> I've tried learning it a couple of times too, and so I'm glad that it's it's I'm not the only one that's having a hard time. <laughs> so it's like the fir- the first half is fine, but then the second half I just 
I, I took a couple swings at it and I still didn't find explanations. So, so yeah, Meishuga is going to be just a bunch of Meshuga stuff. Yeah. So what are you, what are you hungry for now? What do you want to get in the next couple of years of your life? Do you want to grow the YouTube channel? Do you want to do lots more musical collaborations? Do you want to make another distorted harmony album or is it all of the above? Um, I think it's uh, most of the above. <laughs> so um, uh, I think Distorted is going to be a thing that would hopefully never end because it's at some point, maybe two years ago, we got we realized that each of us have their own thing and we're going to kind of take a step back in the, in the intensity towards this band. So it's not going to be like, we used to think like, you know, this is the band, we're going to tour forever and like everything is going to be about this. And we kind of like took it a step back and we're like, no, 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 this is just a very good group of people where the style that we kind of like accumulated to ourselves, I love that style. And it's like, no, no, we should just keep on making music when we feel like making music, but take the like the edge, the pressure off. So that's the thing that's gonna continue, I think. Maybe not as as um, you know, we're not gonna having have an album once a year, but I think that group is here to stay. So and I'm super happy about it. I I, I love that band. So I think mainly what I would, what I'm trying to do is, um, is, is get back to teaching in the college because I was teaching in the college in Israel in the music college that, that I went to and I wrote uh, two polyrhythm courses and I wrote like a drum creativity course that, that bo- like all three of them went very well and actually like the, the, one of the reasons of, for me to start this channel was just to have like kind of like a online um like um, how would i say that so like if i if i apply for to teach at a school or like a college like i i want i mean i want to go back to i want to go back i want to teach at berkeley i want to try and get to berkeley to teach there because i think this kind of 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 education kind of or just like topics rather is not very very um talked about not too much so and i th- i think it's it's lacking so i i, I want to be the one who does it so i thought having this channel would be like a good like here like look this this is what i do this is how i do stuff this is how i think about stuff kind of like a better form of a resume kind of if you know what i mean like a portfolio yeah kind of like if you like this is my teaching style obviously i'm not going to be drawing instruments in in classroom but it's like this is <laughs> how i view stuff if like see if you like it and and then that was one of the that was one of the reasons i started started the channel if i mean i i, I want to continue doing this the the youtube stuff but it it does it, it is it is a full time job it's totally a full-time job. And um, once I actually, because I mean, with the online stuff is fun and all that, but I really miss the in-person like connection with, you know, people. You remember that? You remember people? <laughs> so, I've heard so, that they're still out there. Yeah, yeah, I heard <laughs> it's like, yeah, exactly. So I, I, I want to go back to that basically. And I, I don't think I'm going to stop with the channel once, if, once and if I get there. But yeah, I guess if that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, this is a, <clears throat> I don't know, uh, this is kind of a weird question. I'm not sure how to word it, but I'm going to give it a shot if you're willing to humor me. Mm-hmm. It seems as though with, I like to think about the, the future of the music in general, just like what genres we're going to see coming into the future. And in metal, it seems like everything is sort of stagnated ever since Gent showed up. We've just mm-hmm. kind of been getting obsessed with Gent. Yeah. But now a lot of people are actually starting to break and getting really way, way obsessed with jazz. And a lot of bands, they're not, I don't really even think of Animals as Leaders as being a metal band anymore. You know what I mean? I think of them as, 
heavy fusion. This is like this term that I've come up with in my own mind. It's bands like uh, Victoria, Joshua De La Victoria. I mean, mm-hmm. it's hard hard to find all the metal influences. A lot of the time, they're just kind of staying in this genty jazz universe. So I don't know. I just kind of wonder: Do you ever think about the future of music and what what we what we might be on the horizon? I do, but it usually goes to like a very, very dark place <laughs> because oh it's yeah, just because of um you know the new tendency to to just computerize everything kind of right, so yeah. it's like i I mean I have thought about you know like are, are we even gonna keep playing in fifteen years i mean is it <laughs> like me going to a rehearsal is that like a thing that's gonna happen? I don't even know if that's a thing that's gonna happen. But what I do know is like, yeah, okay, so we did like w- with you know nineties and two thousands and stuff got like way heavier, okay, slowly, okay, we got a seven string guitar like eight like okay, it got eight string guitar, nine how low can you, there's a limit to how low you can go, and yes. there's a limit to how fast we can go i yeah. i mean, i I think we got to the limit i i don't I don't know for sure, but I think we got to the limit and I think it's some in some way people are starting to exactly as you said people are starting to take the like aesthetics of the genre and just applying other like other concepts to it so let's say that the like Victoria that you mentioned they I mean like one of the things for me that makes them a metal band is the fact that it's like you know drums and distortion guitar. Okay. Yeah. And like a lot of the other stuff is like, yeah, this is fusion. This is, it's different thinking than metal. It's not necessarily to cut, to cut, to cut, to cut, to cut that. And I start, I start finding bands that are like, just taking the. Uh, how am I gonna explain this? It's taking the the, like elements, the the, son, the sonic elements. Of, of the genre so they would do their own music but they would go to like a heavy place they'll use distortion they'll they'll do like a heavy breakdown or something or something that sounds like it but not necessarily in the co- in, not necessarily using the other confines of the genre so not necessarily having a vocalist scream at you or not necessarily having super dark lyrics or even like the sound not necessarily so you know artists like like Tigran, for example, where it's very much a, a jazz environment, but like you have those like low breakdowns, rhythmic like riffs and stuff like that. you know what I mean mm-hmm. and I mean I've heard and i'm I'm working on some like a classical piece that a friend of mine wrote. It's um like a piano concerto it's a, it's piano and rhythm section. So it's, it yeah, it's it's classical music to an extent, but it also uses a bunch of like metal influences, kind of. So it feels like a lot of uh, a lot of electronic music uses you know heavy guitars and like super like metal beats and stuff like that. So it's, I think people are starting to like deconstruct the genre and take the take whatever they want from it. And maybe make new genres out of that. Maybe I have no idea. It's I like just we're ha- putting, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think I get what you mean. It's like it's, things might just get more niche. Maybe, maybe. maybe. I mean, th- there's at this point where you know we have the internet and everyone can do everything super easily. There's so much. There's there's way too much. You can't even follow. There's so much music being produced every day. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So I think maybe it is going to be like super niche. And I I, I, I have no idea. I do feel like there's a very big um, like Eastern, not Eastern, but you know the term world music? Yeah, yeah. Th- th- that's a terrible term in my, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> because it's basically <laughs> like anything but american or like english music kind of yeah. it's like okay so but I, I think a lot of whatever 
those musics are, a lot of other traditions are like seeping into the Western kind of like environment. So mm-hmm. a lot of Indian music is now introduced to in, in a bunch of other um, like genres and a bunch of African stuff. Um, so I, I, which I, I love, I love that the fact that you kind of see more of those around whatever it is i just hope that we don't lose the getting together and playing thing yeah because absolutely i i i and i'm i'm seriously concerned <laughs> it's uh I, i'm i'm very i'm 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 not sure it's going to stick around i hope it will i i i don't know but that's that's one thing i really hope we don't lose I, I, I just, maybe I, cause I was just looking at this before we started our conversation and now that you bring up this whole wanting to be with, uh, in the same room with people again, there was a 75 year study at Harvard that found that close relationships are the key to a person's success. Having someone to lean on keeps brain function high and reduces emotional and physical pain. People who feel lonely are more likely to experience health declines earlier in life. Oh boy. That's this is something we already knew, right? I mean, yeah, but with like with the you, I'm gonna sound like such an old person, but with like this uh, this newer generation, kind of, yeah. Where even even yesterday, yesterday we went to like a, a cookout with my family, with my like extended family, and like we were all sitting together except the two like like two kids that were like with their computers for i think i don't know five six seven hours and at some point they just come out and we're like ah i I didn't know you were here kind of yeah and it's just like i i don't know where this leads i don't think it leads to a good place so i agree so what Uh, what, what you're saying is uh, like that 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 study is, is makes it even even uh like even more grim well, let's switch up the subject then. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> uh, so, something I always ask people, and it's just a, become a staple question in my interviews now. What advice would you give to anyone who's just trying to pursue their dreams? Oh, that's so uh, broad. Um, I think now it would be just try not to get discarded. There's there's so many reasons reasons to not do stuff now um it's very easy to get demotivated i think and i i know it because it, it, i mean i struggle with that daily and i think everyone does uh you know i i try to be the best drummer that i can and every second there's a video of a 9 year old kid that can play everything i can way better and way faster so it's like, it's like, okay, and then another one and another one and another one and everyone is amazing. That can be very, very discouraging. And it can be very easy to just like, okay, like why bother kind of? And I think overcoming that is the, is, is the big task, I think reminding yourself that you, you don't have to be the guy on top of Mount Everest. You can still be the guy coming up the side, you know, and that's your, your place right now. That's, that's okay. Right. Like, I mean, it, it, even either that or just reminding yourself that if you see a, a if, I mean, I'm, I'm talking to you, but I'm like, I'm kind of talking to myself, but like if, if you see like a kid on YouTube playing something, it's like, that I mean, that doesn't. It doesn't mean that everything is like because. Do, do you play? Do, are you? Do you play? Yeah, I play guitar. <laughs> so do you know that 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 feeling where where you think your guitar playing is not sufficient enough, and then suddenly your whole self is terrible, and you're a terrible person, and you're just, you're not worth anyone's time, and blah blah blah, and all that. You know that feeling? Yeah, you should never should have been born. Blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that. That is something that is very, very, very hard to 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 deal with, and I think I read a book. 
um, a few months ago that, that really helped me um, like think about those things. And one of the chapters of that book said something like, you, sh you should stop comparing yourself to other people and start comparing yourself to your, your former self, kind of. So compare yourself to what, who you were yesterday instead of who... Ah, that's actually the name of the subject of the chapter. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday instead of comparing yourself to some, who someone else is today. Right. And that that's been that's been an amazing uh, like eye opener for me because it's like okay, if 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 I'm still if tomorrow I'm still not better than whatever other guy I think is better than I am in everything, but I'm better than what I was yesterday. That's that's progress it is and that other person whoever that other person will be they have their own struggles they have their own thing going on obviously i see like the tip of the iceberg of that person and yeah. and they're like who knows maybe he sees my stuff and thinks the same kind of it's just completely possible which is and like I think, uh, yeah so remembering as well that with this is this is art we're not trying to win the olympics exactly it's it's, it's not it's we're not competing we're not like uh, i mean it, it, it sure feels like that sometimes because especially now because you know who has more views who has more followers blah blah blah, blah. like the content is barely even what people care about anymore but once i think that book really um set that thing in, in in my head where like okay i'm like if i want to improve i can't really i should only compare myself to what i was last week or yesterday and if i see improvement there that is like that that's that is pure progress i am better than what i was yesterday there's there's no other 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 way for me to like uh, measure progress because if I look at your guitar playing and I was like, oh, fuck, he's such a good guitar player and I'm gonna, never going to get there. If I practice enough, I'm going to look at your guitar playing tomorrow and I'm going gonna, gonna to think the same thing. It's not like, like you're getting worse or something. You're going to still do your thing. And if you do it well, I'm going to be jealous. So I think that, that, that's, that would be the, the, um, the advice that I would say, I think. It's, Try very hard to not get discouraged by just by 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 what's going on in in the, in the present, and remember that like the only kind of the only person you need to compare yourself to is yourself from the past, from yesterday. This is coming super philosophical, philosophical, <laughs> but um. But yeah, does that make any sense? <laughs> Do it you makes it makes complete sense. Yeah, no, it makes complete sense to me. I I, I totally get that. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to say to our listeners? Go listen to other stuff as well. That's the that's that's a huge thing that I did that really helped me. And as opposed to a bunch of different people that I know that you know, once they start listening to other stuff, they kind of like ditched the metal in a, in a corner it's like no no that, that was my past when i was 15 and i was stupid kind of right that's very much not not the case uh for me at all so i know that i i i try to listen to as many things as i can and every time i go back listening to metal two things happen when i play it i sound a bit different which is which i like and when I listen to just listen to metal, I, I just every time I just rediscover why I love it. So, I have a period of listening to whatever Moroccan music, and then suddenly a Opeth song song comes on or something, and it's just like, oh, thank you, and just like realize <laughs> everything I love I love about that genre. So, yeah, <laughs> cool. Uh, so, so keep it metal, but have a have a balanced diet. <laughs> Completely, but keep it metal. <laughs> That's very important. <laughs> You're listening to the Peach Pit. I've been talking to Yogev Gabai. 
Yogev, this has been a fabulous conversation. It's over an hour long, which I think is officially my longest interview uh, oh, to date now. Amazing. <laughs> we had so much to go over, and I, I have so much more I'd love to ask you about, but we both got to get back to our lives. So thank you so much for taking this evening to talk to me, and uh, maybe we'll get to do it again in the future. Man, I'll be delighted, and thank you very much for having me on the show. Awesome. Take care of yourself. You too. You too.